how to do that. Now, in conversation, in, in uh, everyday conversation, sometimes we will um, substitute a helping verb with the word but in order to substitute for words or phrases just like we did on Monday when we put um, to, to, t, double o to substitute for words and phrases so for example she liked the movie I didn't like the movie okay if we wanted to if we wanted to say that in one sentence and we wanted to say it in fewer words we would say she liked the movie but I didn't that's the same as saying she liked the movie but I did not like the movie so we use the word but we use the word but when we have when we want to say two different things and one is opposite of the other um, I like spicy Thai food but uh, my friend Harry doesn't like spicy Thai food well an easier way of saying that is I like spicy Thai food but Harry doesn't see we're, we're, we're just substituting but with a helping verb and we're using that to substitute for words and, and phrases. Um, here's another example. She doesn't speak English. Her husband speaks English. Now I want you to notice how this says one thing. A person can speak English. This says the opposite. A person cannot speak English. So in order to, to put those together in one sentence, we use the word but. She doesn't speak English, but her husband does. Now, um, are we following me okay so far? We use the word but together with a helping verb when we want to say something in fewer words when the first part of the sentence says one thing and then the second part of the sentence says the opposite. Um, want to try some practice? Yes. Yeah? Uh, I think when we practice you'll, you'll, you'll kind of get the hang of it. Um, but let me um, um, I like coffee. He likes tea. he likes tea. Okay. I like coffee. He likes tea. Now, another way of saying that is I like coffee, but he likes tea. Uh-huh. Um, I like coffee. She doesn't like coffee. Okay, if we wanted to put those into the same sentence, I like coffee, but she doesn't. All we have to say is the help, the, the, the word but, and then the helping verb doesn't. I like coffee, but she doesn't. So we've, 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 we've had two thoughts in the same sentence. The first thought is, I like coffee. The second thought is, she doesn't like coffee. So to put those together in one sentence, we use the word but, and then a helping verb. I call them helping verbs instead of auxiliary verbs because it's just easier to, I mean, that's what it is. It's a verb that helps another verb. So I call it a helping verb. Um, let's try some practice. Now, I keep, somehow, we keep coming up with fewer and fewer copies of this book. Uh, so we'll have to share, okay? We'll have to share. So uh, perhaps you, you can share. Yes. And you two can share. You two can share. And you two can share. And you two can share. And uh, you two can share. And you have one already, okay? <laughs> you get your own. <laughs> 
Um, we'll get it worked out now. Um, we're going to go to we're going to go to 154 154 154 and each each exercise each each sentence um, will include the word but. What we have to do is use the correct helping verb. We have to decide on the correct helping verb. I'll do the first one for us. Dances well, but her sister doesn't. Doesn't. Um, and I'll do the second one. I know how to swim, but Helen doesn't. Doesn't doesn't. Okay, so let's uh, let's start with number three and uh, we'll start with Ma and then we'll just work our way around the room. Okay, so Ma, would you start with number three for us, please? Can't? Yeah. Yes. Now, um, that, that's correct. She can speak French, but her husband can't. Can't. Now, in England, the English is spoken in England, let's say can't. Can't. But in America, in Canada and America, we say can't. Same, same word, just a different pronunciation. And in, in Ireland, they say cop. It just sounds a little bit different. Uh, you say it any way you want to. Uh, I say it can't, because that's just the way we say it in America. Uh, England, England has a more, um, they think, a more uh, formal uh, pronunciation. Uh, they, just, they just speak more formally than we do in America. In America, we use a lot of slang, a lot of idioms. But um, okay, so that's correct. Now, one of the one of the um, tips I want to give you here is that the re how Ma knew to use the word can't instead of uh, say doesn't is because the first part of the sentence said can she can speak French. So we want the second part of the sentence to use the same helping verb but the negative form of the verb. The negative form of the verb. So she did it exactly correct. Good work. <laughs> okay, uh, Tim, number four. But Jimmy won't, won't, won't. That's a tricky one. That was a tricky one. Because, because the first part of the sentence, the first part of the sentence was a contraction, I'll, which, mean, which is a contraction for I will. So we want, the, we want the helping verb in the second part of the sentence to be just like will, except it's past tense. So I'll be there, but Jimmy won't. Won't. OK? Uh, let's go to the back row before we get to, to, to toys. So, number five. Yeah, number five. Well, yeah, we're going we're gonna to go to the back row, and then we'll continue. So, could you do number five, Nook? They didn't like the movie, but we did. That's correct. That's right, correct. You just won 50,000 rupees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could, I could maybe, oh, maybe ten baht. <laughs> uh, now, the first part of the sentence was was a, a negative statement. I didn't like the movie, and the second part of the sentence was a positive statement. I, uh, but we did like the movie. We just substituted but 
and did for the whole phrase. Okay? Uh, and let's see, Nat, would you do number six? That's correct. That's correct. Um, let's see, number seven, Toy. Josh used to be the best student in the class, but a lot of now to them. Ralph. Ralph used to be the best student in the class. Yes, that's right. You, uh, George used to be the best student in the class, but now Ralph is. Is. And the reason, the reason we would say is, is because um, used to be. It's, it's used to be is the, is the verb in the first part of the sentence. So we're, we're wanting to say that in the past, in the past, he was the best student, but now he is, um, George, we we're saying in the past, George was the best student, but now is, is, is present tense. George used to be the best student in the class, but now Ralph is. Because you see how the one part of the sentence is, is opposite than the other part of the sentence. And, and so we use but and a helping verb to change the, the thought from negative